Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC. Today, we get to take the mystery out of the Umarex Trevox Air Pistol. This is a 177 caliber um, brake barrel, and it has a TNT gas piston. Before we get started here, do me a favor if you hadn't, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Uh, don't forget to check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. I got these old t-shirts, and I've got the Generation 2 bipods. They're out and they're doing really well. Also, I occasionally liquidate some of my air guns and I'm actually been really busy right now, believe it or not. I'm in the middle of a remod, kitchen remod. I'm doing 99% of the work myself, doing the tile setting and the whole bit, replacing appliances, just the entire thing. But in between that, I wanted to get this video out for you guys. So, let's get back to the uh, Umarex Trevox. Okay, this gun retails for about 80 bucks, and it is a brake barrel uh, pistol. As I mentioned earlier, it has a TNT gas piston. It, uh, it's a single shot, single shot brake barrel. You just break the barrel, obviously. The optics on this, these are aftermarket. I put these on. It's a really cheap red dot I put on there, just because my eyes are not that good. But it does come with fiber optic. If you'll see here, it's got the red in the front and green in the back. Fully adjustable rear sight for elevation and windage. They claim it shoots about 540 feet per second. We'll test that out and uh, we'll run it over the crony. And we'll check it out with a couple of different type of uh, pellets. The cocking effort on this, I would guess 20 pounds, maybe max 20 pounds. It's kind of nice because it gave you a nice uh, area to grip on the this muzzle brake to, to be able to cock this. The actual barrel on this gun, believe it or not, is only six inches. It's about six and a quarter inches. Uh, the entire gun weighs about three and a half pounds, so it's actually pretty light. But uh, it has, does have a manual safe right here. You can see this right there, manual safe. So it does not automatically go on every time you cock the gun. We're adults, we know how to want to put on the safe. It's got a, about a 5.78 six pound trigger pull. And if I remember correctly, I think this thing came in a clamshell. I've had this for a couple of years. It does have 11 millimeter dovetails for your optics. And other than that, it's a, it's a pretty neat looking gun. Uh, it's got a, I really like the grip on it. It's got a nice grip on it here. But let's see how well it performs. We'll go ahead and we'll take this out. We'll run it through our usual gamut. We'll come back and talk about it. So stay tuned for the next segment. All right, let's see how our Trevix does over the chronograph. Um, what we're going to do, I'm going to shoot just some basics, uh, some RWS basics, basics, some 7.0 grain. We'll shoot five shots over the crony. We'll average that out. We'll see how well it does. When I'm done with that, I'm going to put up how the basic Crossman premieres did, 7.9 grain. Also, the match green, uh, those are a lightweight, like uh, 5.25, something like that grain. And then we're going to go with uh, match light. And I'm going to show you how well those do. Because those in our practices had kind of had the edge on accuracy. So we'll see what type of velocity those put out as well. All right, so let's start with five shots with our 7.0, just our basics. Okay. Shot number one 504. Things pretty quiet too. Shot number two, 509. Okay. Number three, 507. Good standard deviation. I'll usually jinx it when I say that though. Okay, so this would be number four, I believe. 489, ooh, that fell off. See, I jinxed it. I said it had a good standard deviation and then that one fell off. It could have been the skirt and the pellet too. So let's try it here. 492, and because we can, I'm gonna shoot one more. I just wanna see where we're at. Yeah, these are sliding in really easy. 509, that's kinda of back where we were. Okay, so that's your velocity with um, the basics is 7.0 grain. So take a look at the Crossman uh, Premier. Check those out. 
those are pretty decent velocity and those are pretty easy pellets to come by uh, the match green those are lightweight pellet look how high the velocity is we got on that one and now finally the uh, match lights those I found to be the most accurate the H&N match lights those are I think those are just under eight grains anyway you can see how they did all right let's move on to the next segment all right now we're gonna do a little uh, accuracy test with our Umarex Trevox and see how well it does. I'm actually about um, 11, 12 yards back. Go ahead and take a quick look. All right, so what we're gonna do, I wanna thank Splatterburst for supplying us with these targets. We're gonna shoot one of these little targets at 12 yards and we'll just see how well this groups. We're gonna use, these work actually the best. These are the H&N Sport, the match lights, and uh, we're gonna shoot a five stop group. Also, hey, I want to thank Lyman. Check this new shooting platform out. It's, uh, it's adjustable. It's almost like a scissor jack on the bottom. And then this heavy bag at the side. So we're going to put this to some good use. So thanks to Lyman. So let's uh, see how well we do. All right. Cheap little red dot on here. That's one. That was lucky. That's two. That's three. That's four. And one more. Five. Not too shabby, especially for a under an eighty dollar pistol. All right, let's move on to the next segment. Let's do a little trigger test on our Trevox. Let's hope the weather continues to crop, cooperate. It's been raining off and on, and it's usually cold, windy, all the above. So anyway, let's see how well this does. Let me just show you what this trigger does, and then I'm going to talk about it just for a second. All right, so we got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge here. We're ready. Let's see how well we do. All right. All right, that was two pounds, 15 ounces. Two pounds, 15 ounces. Okay, now I gotta tell you guys, I got this gun a few years ago, and the trigger on it out of the box is brutal. It's like six pounds and a mile of creep. That means a long, long, long trigger pull. So I did do some modification. I don't remember exactly what I did because it's been so long. But I did write down the process of how to modify it, and I will leave that in the comment section or below my description. But basically, just to simplify it, you put a little bit longer screw in here, and it takes up a lot of the creep. And when you put that screw in, you just got to be careful that your safety still works, and you can test it by going through the process. As far as getting in and taking the trigger component, I'll give you the description of that, but if you do this, it's all on your own. I would suggest just leave it alone, shoot the gun the way it is, unless you're incredibly savvy and uh, you just hate really difficult triggers, and I do. So that is what I did. I modified this a while ago. You're getting a modified um, sample. Some of you uh, complain, say, oh, why are you showing a gun that's modified? We can't modify it. Well, excuse me. I'm not going to go back on a gun that I had two, three years ago and undo my modifications just to show you what it is out of the box. I'm telling you what it is out of the box. It's a close to a six pound trigger pull that is brutal. <laughs> it really is. So, but what I'm showing you is the potential for less than a dollar, you can turn this into a decent trigger. And you saw that two pounds, um, 15 ounces. All right, enough lecturing. Let's continue to have fun here and move on to the next segment. All right. All right, let's try a little plinking with our Trevox. We're still at the same 12 yards. Uh, 
you could probably add another eight yards and you could probably shoot uh, 20 yards with these but um, I'm kind of a crunch for time I want to get this video out for you guys so we're just gonna plink at 12 today but you can at least watch the impact because I got a couple of those really heavy eggs out there we'll see if we can knock those over all right let's go with the bottom first though let's go with the red egg on the bottom well it turned it didn't exactly knock it over but it turned it all right little pig yeah we got a twofer on that one how about the teeny little bird there to the left think we can get that guy Yes, we did. All right. Go to the top row. That little blue pipe. Yep. This thing actually whips it out pretty good. You know, we're shooting 500 feet per second here. Shotgun shell. All right. It's like an old piece of a sprinkler I've got there. Let's try that white egg up there. Knock that one over. All right, not too shabby, especially for under 80 bucks. All right, let's move on to the next segment. Well, let's wrap this up with our conclusion. Yeah, I had to go to the jacket. It's getting a little cold. Yeah, I'm sure you guys on the East Coast are saying that we're a bunch of wimps out here, but normally I don't get cold, but for some reason we're having an unusual cold front. So I try to get this video through, um, kind of fighting the elements back and forth. It's been raining on and off. But anyway, how did our Trebox do? I got to tell you guys, I had another gun all lined up uh, to go through this review. Um, I already chronoed it, did a couple things with it. And I was testing it just yesterday for accuracy, and it was doing well. And I went today, and it would not shoot. I put it on the crony. It lost 50 feet per second, so I'm thinking it probably blew a piston seal. So that's going to be another project. But it's just typical, you know, when you try to put something together, there's always something that goes wrong. But, you know, that's just life. They're always, it's always something. All right, back to our Trevix. How did it do? Not bad. Not bad at all, especially considering it's an $80 gun. Let's talk about the negatives. What do you think my number one negative is? You're right. The trigger. It's brutal. It's got a mile of creep and six pounds, and it's heavy. But there's a couple things you can do to improve that. I'm going to leave that um, down in my uh, comment section. I highly recommend that you don't do this unless you're a professional. I do not want to be getting emails saying, oh, I took my trigger apart, now I don't know what to do at your own risk. Like I said, have a professional try to adjust that for you. But I will give you guys some information on uh, some things that you can do to improve that trigger. Because like I said, now it's a decent trigger. So it makes it actually a nice gun. And honestly, I spent less than a dollar to, to uh, modify this. Number two negative. From what I remember, like I said, I've had this a couple years, but I'm pretty sure because I normally keep boxes. I don't have the box for this. I think this thing came in a clamshell. I hate those things. Anyway, that would be your number two negative. All right, again, remember it does not come with this site. This is just a really cheap red dot you can get off of eBay, what have you. I put on here, I put a 11 millimeter to a Picatinny, but they actually make some of these red dots now that are 11 millimeters, so you can put one right on here. But it's kind of nice because it does have an accessory rail for you. Positive, the cost. This thing's about, it's a brake barrel pistol for about 80 bucks. The great thing about that means no CO2, no outside air source, you just cock it and go. And weather elements aren't going to affect the velocity. Number two positive, this thing is really quiet. You saw in the decibel reader this thing, I think it was what, 70 something. It is really backyard friendly. I mean quiet. This is a quiet brake barrel gun. So again, no CO2, nothing, just cock it and go. Also, the accuracy, it was not bad. And you saw me just bag resting it and what have you. And I got three quarters up at 12 yards. And I wouldn't hesitate. If I had a little bit more time, like I said I was kind of rushing this video, I would have pushed my plinking back to uh, 20 yards at least. Because you could actually plink with this thing 20 yards. You could hit 
you know, cans, pop cans all day long with it. Let's see. Other than that, the grip, the grip feels really good. I like how it has kind of a, a texturized and it's got that um, cut out basically for your finger. So it actually feels pretty good. And I got pretty good hand, size hands and it actually feels uh, quite well. The caulking effort on this, I like the way they set it up with the muzzle brake here. So you got your sight here, but it's a nice, easy area for you to caulk. So that's that's pretty good. Um, feet per second, Umerx was actually pretty accurate. They said a high of 540. We got, I think with the one pellets, we averaged around 500 feet per second. But you saw the other ones were a little hotter. And uh, and then really the lightweight ones, and it doesn't do too bad with some of those um, non-lead pellets, the lightweights. It actually shoots over 600 feet per second. So this would be good for like some close-up pest control. You know, you got that annoying rat, it just happens to show its head. You could probably take care of business with that. Anyway, how would I rate this gun overall? Four stars. It's getting four stars because it comes with a brutal trigger, and that's the God's honest truth. If it was a better trigger, it would be... Um, Probably get a little better better marks on it. Um, I do like. And I haven't mentioned this is does not feel cheap. This is not like a cheap plastic. This is this is like a, a nylon and it's very solid. Like I said, you'd be surprised when you go. Mm, Eighty bucks for this thing. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on. Don't forget about my website. Uh, it's where I have the cool T-shirts. Yeah, of course. Um, covering it up here with a little jacket there, but cool T-shirts and uh, my bipods. Don't forget, you got a brake barrel. You're gonna want to set up those bipods for it. Trust me. It will definitely improve your shooting. Look at some of the uh, feedback comments that I have on my website. But check that out, www.airgundetectives.com. Also, check out my buddy Moose. I got a good buddy Moose. that uh, He's got air guns in Michigan, so he has a YouTube channel, and he does reviews as well. But uh, uh, his reviews are a lot of fun, so check him out as well. With that, I want to thank you all again for um, tuning into this episode of Air Gun Detectives. This is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. So until next time, I hope you and your family are all doing well. You're safe and healthy. Take care.